Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo to skip E3, PSVR 2 production code due to bad pre-order numbers, The Last of Us HBO record and praise by Xbox Boss, Game Informer reveals new Resident Evil 4 details, all that and more in today's PlayStation news, let's get to them. Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo to skip E3 The ESA was planning 43 to make a big return to being a physical event, and even enlisted Comic Con and PAX organizer Reed Pop to improve it. However, with little over 4 months away from the event, it has already taken a huge hit. IGN reports they heard from multiple sources the big 3 Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo will all skip the show and won't have digital events related to it or be part of the show floor at this year's E3. Sony has skipped the show since 2018 in favor of their own digital event and didn't have any physical space. They teamed up with Summer Game Fest last year. Microsoft followed a similar path in 2019 and last year. So far they are the first to confirm a physical summer event in Los Angeles, but it won't be tied to E3. Nintendo opted for digital events for a while now, but supported the show with a booth until 2019, before it was cancelled due to the pandemic in 2020. Reed Pop told BGC they are still confident about the event and expect major game companies to be a part of it. They received a tremendous amount of interest from the biggest companies in the industry. Meanwhile, Summer Game Fest didn't waste time and posted a savage tweet as this news broke, inviting everyone to tune in on June 8th. E3 will be held in the Los Angeles Convention Center from June 13th through the 16th. Are you interested in attending? What do you think about the big three not going? Voice your opinion in the comments. MLB The Show launches on Game Pass, but nothing for PS Plus. Sony has announced the details for this year's MLB The Show, whose cover is graced by Marlins Just Chisholm. The game launches on March 28th for PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. The PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch versions are priced at 60, while the PS5 and Series versions are 70. Sadly, not PC yet, even with Sony's push for PC games. If you get the PS4 or Xbox One version, you can upgrade to the equivalent next gen version for 10, but only on the digital edition. Pre orders for the game open on February 6th, and San Diego Studio will announce a collector's edition on the 2nd that includes dual entitlement for both versions of the same family. The game launches day one on Game Pass for the third year in a row, and while that's amazing, it sucks there's nothing on the PS Plus side, not even a discount. Sony has previously explained they wouldn't be adding first party AAA games to subscription services as they believe in premium releases. A poor explanation, to be fair. It's likely that MLB is the one who negotiates with Microsoft for the release on Game Pass, but not Sony, and they have to agree given that going multi platform was the requirement to keep the license. As for features, the game will have cross platform play, cross saves, and cross progression by linking your MLB account so you can play everywhere and with anyone. The only exception to cross progression is next gen specific features such as the Stadium Creator. Are you looking forward to MLB The Show this year? Do you think Sony should do day one launches on PS Plus? Let us know in the comments. Ghost of Tsushima 2 teased? In our previous video, we talked about how Uncharted 5 was apparently being teased in the new Live from PS5 TV ad, and now some people believe the next Ghost of Tsushima is being teased as well. At the 43 second mark, there's a group of horsemen with Japanese armor going through a village, and a character among spider lilies later in the video. The ad is meant to announce the improved PS5 stock across different markets with current or upcoming games, hence why people believe they are teasing unannounced games. I think the Uncharted section is suspicious because the segment can be tied to a current game even with the Legacy of Thieves collection, but this one could clearly be tied to Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. Anyway, I think we're looking too much into this ad that are usually produced by a separate marketing company and not PlayStation. But what do you think? Share your opinion in the comments. PSVR 2 production cut due to bad pre-order numbers Sony is getting ready for the PSVR 2 launch this February 22nd, but a new report from Bloomberg is saying fans are not so excited about the device. Bloomberg is saying Sony may have half their PSVR 2 estimates from the original 2 million headsets due to disappointing pre-order numbers. The report indicates a supply partner has been told to expect reduced display panel orders, but that might increase if there's demand. However, Sony has provided a statement to GameIndustry.biz where they deny Bloomberg's report saying they haven't cut production numbers and are seeing the enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming launch. The rumored 2 million forecast for PSVR 2 tells us they are hoping the device to sell a lot more than the original, which has sold 5 million as of January 2020. Look forward to an upcoming video with everything you need to know about PSVR 2. 
Are you getting the device at launch? Share with us in the comments. The Last of Us HBO record and praised by Xbox Boss. Back to more The Last of Us news as the TV series broke a 50-year-old record for HBO with its second episode viewership increasing by 22%, which is the largest two-week growth for an HBO original in its 50-year history. Episode 3 also got great results as it drew 6.4 million viewers, a 12% increase from the previous episode. The series continues to receive praise even from competitors now, with Xbox boss Phil Spencer saying to IGN, They have done a great job with an adaptation of a fantastic game on the television screen, and kudos to the team, all the teams that worked on it. He went on further and said The Last of Us TV show is setting an incredibly high bar that everyone should aspire to. Activision executive Lulu Cheng, however, has used the series' popularity as ammo to get the FTC on their side in the Microsoft merger. She said the series was a true blockbuster watched by tens of millions produced by Sony Pictures and PlayStation Productions based on a best-selling game made by a Sony-owned studio. She continues using it as proof that there's no concern about Sony's market-leading position being jeopardized by the deal, which is one of the FTC worries for stopping it. I partially agree with her, Sony has made previous comments as if they can't go on without Call of Duty if the deal is closed, which is further from the truth. But still find her comments a bit on the pathetic side as part of the continued struggle between Sony and Microsoft to sell themselves short. So what do you think about these developments and the continued success of the TV series? Sound off in the comments. Game Informer reveals new Resident Evil 4 details. Resident Evil 4 is the cover for this month's Game Informer and they will have lots of information about the game, including a 12-page segment in this issue where they talk about their experience with chapters 1 and 5. Their cover reveal video also shows snippets of new gameplay. Among the new details, there will be several new enemies including one that uses a bull mask and a hammer. You can pick up side quests via blue flyers similar to the graveyard quest in the original, but now there are more. These ask you to solve puzzles, get items, fight enemies and more. You turn them to the merchant for rewards. The merchant will obviously offer many upgrades and among those laser sights for all firearms, as your weapon won't start with one unlike the original. No QTEs will appear as the team wanted to do away with those antiquated sequences, instead making them more engaging. You can carry multiple knives and upgrade them, they said a knife only playthrough is viable. There will be many special weapons available including a new crossbow weapon you can retrieve ammo for and even attach explosive mines. Attache cases will work in the same way to house items, but you can now use charms that will add different perks like increased ammo drops for example. Ashley will be able to follow you closely or fall back keeping her distance, and you can switch both states by pressing R3. But she never stays put in one place, and there's no dumpster for her to hide. She won't have a health bar so you won't have to use resources on her, instead she will fall into an incapacitated state after taking too much damage. At that point you will need to revive her, but if you fail and she takes another hit, it's game over. And that's pretty much the new stuff that was mentioned in the issue, Game Informer will have more during all month, which we'll cover here in future videos. What's your hype level for Resident Evil 4 Remake? Let us know in the comments. Now let's go for a round of quickfire game news. The Twisted Metal TV series has been hinted at a 2023 release by PlayStation Productions head Asad Quisilvash, with a tweet showing the Sony building elevator has current productions such as Gran Turismo and The Last of Us, and he mentioned there's also a certain clown with his head on fire. A third PlayStation Plus game has been updated with trophy support, this time it's PS1 classic Jumping Flash which has gotten 15 of them including a Platinum. Sony, Capcom, please do the same for Resident Evil Classic. Capcom is getting Street Fighter 6 ready for June later this year, and as part of the real-time commentary feature that looks to make your fights feel like you are competing in a real tournament, they have added Thea Trinidad known as WWE Superstar Selena Vega. Sega has announced the pre-order details for Like a Dragon Ishin, the digital deluxe version will give you 3 bonus weapons and allow you to play 4 days early on February 17. Pre-ordering at GameStop or Best Buy in the US gives you an exclusive steelbook. Square Enix celebrated the 26th anniversary of the original Final Fantasy VII in a very special way. The game was released on January 31st, 1997 in Japan, so they have officially registered the date as Final Fantasy VII Day, and they will release a Midgar special pack for Power Wash Simulator. Amazon may have acquired the Tomb Raider IP from Embracer Group and Crystal Dynamics for around 600 million, presumably in dollars. It has not been confirmed, but the source of this news previously reported on Amazon's purchase of the Lord of the Rings TV rights. 
and we know the Giant is in the publishing role for the next game in the series. Ubisoft has announced the Crew Motorfest, an off-road racer that takes you to the Hawaiian island of Oahu as previously rumored. An insider program will start on PC this February 1st, but add consoles later in the cycle. It will release this year for PS4 and PS5. EA has announced that Star Wars Jedi Survivor has been delayed a little over a month from March 17 to April 28. Respawn announced the next chapter in Cal Kestis' story is content complete, but they require additional time to achieve the level of polish their fans deserve. Dead Space Patch 1.03 is now out and fixes the super resolution bug that PS5 fans were experiencing since release that would take the graphics to cell shading levels. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. What are your thoughts on them? Share them in the comments below, let me know your feedback by liking or disliking this video, check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here, and consider subscribing for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hype4Games, and let's get hyped!